It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. Today, I'm talking to Nicole Kelsch. She is the new artistic director of the Ballet Theater of Maryland. It's a fully professional ballet company right here in Annapolis, Maryland. Thank you for joining me today, Nicole. Thank you for having me. You have been with the Ballet Theater of Maryland for quite some time, and full disclosure, I used to help the Ballet Theater of Maryland out with some photography and some social media, so I know Nicole and I know the company very well. You've been with the company for a long period of time, yes? Yes, 14 years. And mm -hmm. during the winter, the announcement was made uh, that Diana mm -hmm. was going to be re retiring, yes? Yes, that's correct. Well, tell me about what you all have been doing because ballet is a, uh, it's a contact art. And with the social distancing that we have in our lives right now, how, do, how does all that happen? Currently, we are dancing in our bedrooms, kitchens, <laughs> basements, living rooms. Um, we have a continued not, company class. But um, you're not dancing with one another in your kitchens, oh, basements, no, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> unless we, unless, you know, some of the dancers do room together, so then right. they might together. But, um, yeah, so we are doing classes on Zoom every day still. We've been since the shutdown. Um to try to keep in shape the best we can. Sometimes a challenge with the space. I um, frequently kick my stove. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching, but... <laughs> well, so now going back to March, when we were suddenly had to leave all of our places of work and go home, including you all, you mm -hmm. were, though, rehearsing for another show. It was going to be your final performance of the season, yes? Yes, we were just getting ready uh, to start official rehearsals for that show. We were doing outreach as well at that point in a few schools. All of that disappeared and all of the income from that disappeared. Yes, correct. correct. And so how did you stay on your toes, so to speak, financially? We immediately started to research uh, grants that were available, whatever assistance we could find to apply for, because this is going to affect us going forward as well. It's not once we fully reopen, we won't be reopening in the normal fashion in theaters, so there will be reduced revenue for some time uh, for the foreseeable future. So trying to make sure that we were on top of everything that was available for us to start to get ready to go into next season was really important. The grants that you applied for, did that help? Or are the dancers getting unemployment? Yes, yes. All the dancers, well, some of them have more than one job, but if they were able to claim unemployment, yes, they are. And then that will continue for them um, until we go back to work. So some of the teachers will start to teach in the summer, um, and then we come back officially at the end of August. All right. So there's, yeah, and that's an important part of the Ballet Theater of Maryland. There is a school, and there's a professional yeah. company. The professional company does these performances. Uh, uh, they are one of the resident companies of the Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts, and they do outreach throughout the state. For those that don't realize the life of a professional ballet dancer in Annapolis, Maryland, they they cannot live on by ballet alone. So no. most most of them do work second jobs. Yes. Yes, and I think everyone. There might be one dancer in the company who does not have an outside job, but other than that, the principals, the soloists, semi soloists, apprentice, everyone has another job outside the ballet. And to get into the nitty gritty, there the in addition to having a second job, how many hours a week during Nutcracker season are they <laughs> in the studio? During Nutcracker season with performances, it, definitely over 40 hours. Our normal work week is 35 hours. The shoes that you're wearing, the female dancers, the point shoes, mm -hmm. how, much, how much do those cost? Those will range uh, from about 90 to 130 or $40, depending on the type of shoe they wear per pair. And how often do they need to be replaced? Sometimes every week, sometimes more than once a week. 
this is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> this, the, 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 the dancers do this not because they want to get rich, right? <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a lifelong passion, and something almost I feel like that we as dancers we have to do. It's not just that we want to do it, but it's in our blood. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I'm talking to Nicole Kelsch. She's the artistic director of the Ballet Theater of Maryland. The new, the brand new artistic director of the Ballet mm -hmm. Theater of Maryland. So uh, you have quite the shoes to fill. Diana uh, was, I guess, a huge mentor to you. Diana Quado, the former artistic director. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. I've worked closely with her for the entire time I've been here, but within the past probably two or three years, she really started to prepare me for what would be necessary to, to take on the company. And she's j just always been a wonderful, wonderful teacher for me, uh, both in the art form and on the business side. And uh, I believe in the community and the family environment that she's created within the company. So I hope to be able to... The, the <laughs> amount of hours that Diana and her husband Al put in on top of the amount of hours that you all have to put in anyway and Nicole is a dancer Nicole was the ballet mistress before becoming the artistic director which means she was in sort of the next highest level before the artistic director and also in charge of the school um, but the amount of hours that Diana and Al put into that company I mean that's that's some killer work it is, yes. yes. But I think it's it's along the same lines as being a dancer. When you truly care and and uh, believe in in the work, it's to an extent it stops being work. Yeah, you know, it's it's part of your life, and I I'm looking forward to it. I am. I'm excited. All right, so the governor has recently said that dance studios can open back up, right, it, with social distancing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so how, exactly yeah. how is that going to look? Well, for us, we're taking it a little slower. Um, so we had in place um, the plan to create an outdoor studio for the summer. And we, after some research on my part and uh, some feedback from parents. I we're going to continue with that plan. So, Going outside. Um, yes. And so, how? Uh, <laughs> so this goes back to those shoes that you wear and the damage that can be done well, to. Yeah. So, so how does? So we're yeah. creating a floor. Yes, we're creating okay. a floor. Um, we won't be on like pavement or grass or anything. So we uh, have a way to sort of. We're not necessarily making the floor a sprung floor, which is what we have in the studios, but it will be cushioned so that it will absorb shock better for their legs, and it'll have the marley or rubber flooring that we put on top of the wood, and then it'll be covered by a tent, and we have uh, fans and air conditioners and Wow, so, good, th good thinking. Yeah, who, who, <laughs> okay, so the next question is, this, is this going outside of your current studio? Yes. In the parking lot there? Yes. It's such a good idea. Yeah, I, I kind of made a joke, I think, at one point about like, well, I'm going to have these kids dancing whether it's outside or not, and it kind of just went from there. Um, kind of, I think, a joke that I made with... Uh, Ted Atzinger, our board president, and then he kind of was like, I like that idea, and so... And let's do it. Did the board do research, yeah. <laughs> so you've been doing all the research, or has you, have you had some help from the board? A little bit of help from, from Ted, um, and then another uh, dancer in the company uh, who was getting involved um, on the financial side of things a little bit. Uh, Alexander Collin also has been helping me. So, yeah. For those that don't know, what 
uh, what Nutcracker is. <laughs> and there might be a few out there. Nutcracker is the biggest performance of the year for any ballet company, and it takes place during the, uh, the holiday season in December. So you might think that uh, some of these ballet companies that are performing Nutcracker are starting rehearsals in September or October. And you would be thinking wrong if you're thinking about the Ballet Theater of Maryland. When do rehearsals start for the for Nutcracker? That takes place in December. Uh, well, usually they would start in June mm -hmm. um, during our summer intensive, obviously. So this year we are not starting in June. We will have to start in September uh, with that. So it'll be a, a test. But I think that we can do it. I don't have any doubt that, you know, I don't think we'll have a problem. With rehearsals, will you be wearing masks outside, even in this tent, or not, or how? You... No. So, so we're we're mostly doing class, not so much rehearsal, to be able to keep the distance between mm -hmm. the dancers. Um, so we will still be keeping them six feet apart. We will not be wearing masks. That's another reason that we're staying outside. The guidance that I'm finding for dance classes at the stage of opening that we're at is uh, to have the dancers wearing masks if they're inside the studio. No one wants to, to be inside it. and wearing masks. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> While <So> dancing. <laughs> That's... Are you dealing with what if scenarios? Like what if we go back into Always. a stay at home order and this puts us into going into the fall, winter, then so, what? what we're like what yeah, well, tell me what goes through your mind. Right, right. So well our for summer we have some of our classes outside, um, but also it's July in Annapolis. So we don't have the students outside all day. So they take a few hours in person, and then they go home and do a few hours virtually um, via Zoom. So assume, you know, hopefully we stay where we're at. But if we were to go into a stay-at-home order again, we would be able to continue the schedule via Zoom as it's set. Going into the fall, that's a different different ball game. Uh, the school we can run via Zoom, the company and performances we cannot. Therein lies another question, what does happen with performances for you or for the other resident companies of Maryland Hall? Is there any indication yet what that's going to look like? We will have decreased capacity in the theater for certain so that they can ensure social distancing. We are looking at digital streaming, um, whether we're able to be in the theater or not. So right now, if someone purchases um, a ticket or a subscription to our performances, they would also be given access to all digital content that we create around that show. So we're planning to have it streaming as well as live, and we're planning to let the patrons in on some of the rehearsal process leading up to the shows as well. Talk about ideas of 2020 that you wouldn't have heard about four or five, six, right. ten years ago, <laughs> right? All right, let's talk yeah. about what your season's supposed to look like that lies ahead. If everything yeah. goes perfectly, a uh, vaccination comes out. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I'm talking to Nicole Kelsch. She's the Artistic Director of the Ballet Theater of Maryland, located in Annapolis, Maryland. They have uh, two components to the Ballet Theater of Maryland. One is the professional company, and one is the school. Tell me what the season is supposed to look like for 2021, if everything is perfect. Well, we're calling the 2020-2021 season our season of hope, as we are very hopeful that we'll return to the stage and be able to share our art form with the audiences. Assuming that everything goes to plan, we are restaging Dracula in October, and this is the version that was created by Edward Stewart, who was BTM's founding artistic director. Yep. So we're excited about that. I have been in talks to have some dancers from the past come back to help with the rehearsal process. And I think it'll be great for the current dancers to have a connection to their history and the, those who danced here before them. So I'm excited about that. And then, of course, in December, we'll have the Nutcracker, everyone's holiday favorite. What's that about again? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for those of us that have been through several 
hundred thousand rehearsals. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, that ballet is actually the reason that I became a dancer, but that's there, another story. There's nothing um, not to love about it, by the way. There's just nothing not to love. But you can get a little worn on the music after, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, after years and years of hearing right. it for hours and hours. Yeah. Um, so moving moving past Nutcracker, in February we are doing The Little Mermaid, um, both at Maryland Hall and at the Gordon Center in Owings Mills. And we are closing out the season with um, a mixed rep show. So it will be uh, some newly commissioned and existing classical and contemporary works. They'll be shorter. So there will probably be four or five of them on the show. So where do you put your mark here with your original choreography? Is that where the mixed rep show comes in? We'll see. We'll see. Right now, uh, I'm focusing on getting the dancers back to dancing and making sure that that everything is as it needs to be with with all that's going on. So, do you have any quite... desire to mix things up a little bit? Like, for instance, with Nutcracker, or are you going to keep Diana's Nutcracker? I think we'll keep Diana's Nutcracker, um, and her works will stay in the wrap. So mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, I want to make sure that her uh, legacy and work continues as well. Yeah, Diana's Nutcracker is beautiful, and it's one we, we, um, we all know and love in this area. Do you have a desire to add something new, to add a full-length something in the, in the future? Maybe not next season, but the one after? Possibly. I think eventually, for sure. Looking ahead, though, because, you, you know, we all have to look ahead. When things become normal again, when the vaccination is out, when social distancing is no longer a thing, we do have, like, this younger, hipper group of people around that will always be around as some of mm -hmm. us age up, um, us younger, hipper people, <laughs> that, that want to see new and different in the ballet. Yes. So one of the things we were going to start implementing uh, this season if things were uh, back to normal is um, that we are looking at turning our studios into a black box theater, or I guess so that they can be both converted into a black box and still serve as the studio. And my thought with that was that Saturday evenings, could be a way to introduce or service that that younger crowd with a shorter show, themes that are relevant to what's going on in the world. Um, and then after those shows, inviting the patrons with the dancers to go to a local restaurant or bar for a drink and to socialize. Oh, that sounds great. Sounds super. Mm -hmm. All right, so we know that the uh, income has been off because of coronavirus with you all. We know that you all are starving artists, so to speak. How can people help the Ballet Theater of Maryland right now and going forward? BalletMaryland.org is the website, and there are a few ways to donate. There's the, a one-time donation. We also have something called a core uh, donation program, and that's a recurring donation of um, an amount that the patron can choose. And subscription purchases would be really helpful to us right now. They go on sale on July 15th, and with a subscription, you have the option of in-person and digital or just digital. So it's whatever the level of comfort that you're feeling we have a way to a way for you to see ballet and enjoy it so all right well there it is balletmaryland.org nicole thank you for joining me today and all the best mared for your season of hope <laughs> thank you very much this is donna cole on the 1430 connection we'll see you next week